Hello, Professor Toybox here, along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and we're back for our next episode of Toybox Tutorials. At the end of my last episode, I mentioned that there was a toy that I had to use in order to get my cutscene to work properly, and that I had not taught you how to use this toy yet. So I want to do that today, before we return to my Fantasia toy box. You'll remember, when the outlaw reaches the end of the path, there are two camera shots that are triggered before the cutscene ends. The first is a close-up of Mickey, and the second is a low-angle shot of the outlaw. And you may have been wondering, how did I get the outlaw to stand still for that shot? Well, to do that, I used a toy called a stopwatch. And that's our topic for today's lesson. You'll find this in the Creativitoys drawer. And I'll go ahead and place that out here in the middle of the street for right now. And this stopwatch, when it's activated, will cause all of the enemies and townspeople to freeze in their tracks. So you can see they've stopped mid-stride. <laughs> They're not moving. And as I said, it does that for both enemies and for townspeople. And you can push the button again, and that stops the effect, and now they're moving around. So this can be very helpful for cutscenes, but you can also use it for games. It's kind of like the player is stopping time, uh, or the player is moving so fast that everything around them seems like it's standing still. <laughs> So, you can find some creative uses for this toy. Now, you can also use this, you don't have to just push the button, but you can also use a logic connection to control this. And so if we drop down a button here, and I select the button, do a new logic connection when pressed, we can come over to the stopwatch, and you'll see there are two behaviors you can start the stopwatch, and you can stop it. And so I can use a logic connection to do either of those. So I don't have to push the button on the toy itself. I can push another button, which activates it and does essentially the same thing. But what that means is you can use a trigger area or anything you want to go ahead and uh, trigger that behavior. You don't have to have it sitting out in the environment and pushing it. And if you open the logic menu, you'll note there are no properties for this toy, but there are some logic connections, and as you would expect, it'll broadcast a trigger signal whenever the stopwatch is started or stopped. And so you can use those to hook up to other toys and control their behavior depending on what the stopwatch is doing. So I'll go ahead and delete both of these. And what I had done for my cutscene last week, you didn't see it, but I had set up a stopwatch over here. And I had it set up so that when the enemy reaches this path point, not only does that kick off the next cutscene, but it also connects to a time delayer that's sitting out over next to that stopwatch. And you can see the yellow line connecting to that so that when the point is reached by the object on the path, when the uh, enemy reaches the end of that path, it starts a delay on that time delayer. And I'm using the time delayer. <laughs> those enemies are, or those townspeople are talking. Um, I used a time delayer because if I connected directly to this, the enemy would have stopped mid-stride. And so I connected to a time delayer and I set the properties on that, so the delay time was half a second. And then when that uh, delay was completed, it started the stopwatch. And then this time delayer here, which we hooked up last week, which goes off at the end of the cutscene and ends the cutscene, that actually connects over to the stopwatch to go ahead and do the delay completed. And so right when it displays the text and says go, I unfreeze the enemy. And that kept him stationary there for the cameras to be able to focus on him. So that's the stopwatch. I haven't used this very often, but it's a fun toy and you can find some creative uses for it. 
Next week, we'll return to my Fantasia toy box and continue working on the interior of the Magician's Castle as we look at how to use some more toys. Until then, I want to thank you for watching and remind you to subscribe to my channel or follow me on my blog if you haven't done that yet so you don't miss the next episode. That's all for me today. Take care.